girls? Are we ready to start this art class? I know that I'm super excited. So last lesson, we did an artist study on Mary Blair and her wonderful and beautiful contributions that she did to Disney, and we wanna thank Mary Blair for that. This art lesson, we're gonna be focusing on our artist skills and developing them further. We're gonna talk about value and how we can incorporate that into our drawings to give it dimension and to make them pop. So this week, our subject is gonna be jewels and gems, similar to some that you might have seen in many video games that you've played, or like the ones Miss Rebellis wears on her fingers. So let's get started on these interesting geometric shaped jewels that we are creating with interesting value and tones. Are you ready? The materials we're going to need are a pencil, a sharpie, watercolors, but if you don't have watercolors at home, you can always use crayons or color pencils. They work just the same. I'm going to show you how to do it in watercolor. The first thing is, so the subject for our project is going to be gemstones. And so gemstones are really fun to draw because once you get the hang of it, they're super easy to make. So we're going to start with a couple gemstones. So I have a couple gemstones that I can show you. We can use them as inspiration. So I have this big purple one, this amethyst one. I have a square rose quartz. I have a couple more, this gold one. I have a nice clear one that's actually connected to a necklace. And I even have this one. So I'm going to place these to the side for right now. And we're going to be drawing some gemstones similar to the ones that you would find in a ring. So similar to this one that I have. So we're going to start first by drawing two different kinds of gemstones. So what we can do is actually fold our paper in half. So I'm going to first start with one on this side. And it's going to be an emerald, which is a green one that I don't have, but it's usually dark green. We're going to start first with two lines on each side, almost like we were gonna draw a rectangle. So we wanna draw all these straight lines about the same distance. Then we wanna connect our lines around. And so I want to do one more of these lines coming out, but this one's going to be a bit shorter. And then I'm going to curve my lines a little bit. Now it's my job to take my Sharpie and outline all of my lines. my paper and I'm going to draw the next crystal which doesn't matter if you flip it upside down or not it looks the same on both sides I'm going to start with my pencil I'm going to draw four lines in a row so now I want to connect the lines I'm going to draw these ones a little bit longer I'm going to connect these down and these diagonally up same thing these a little bit longer these diagonally go down so now I want to connect my lines. So I'm going to draw these two lines to meet like a triangle. And then this line is going to come and follow the point. So I want it all to end up in one point. So I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. So these two lines meet in a triangle. And this line meets diagonally to create a nice sharp point. And that's that crystal. So now we're going to do the same thing. Go over our lines and sharpen. Now it's time to start watercoloring. We're gonna first start with our emerald. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush, dip it in the water, pat the extra water off, and I'm gonna start with my lightest color first, which is the yellow. So I'm gonna pat it into the yellow, and then start to paint. So the whole center is going to be yellow. So as I'm painting, I wanna kind of avoid the middle. And so I left a little white spot on purpose, so I want to keep that there. Now I'm going to go over my sides, just these two spots. Now I'm going to place yellow in two more spots. At the top, just a line, and at the bottom. 
now it's time to go in with my green. So I'm going to pick a nice evergreen, dip my paintbrush in it, rub off the extra water, and I'm going to start on the darkest parts of my emerald, which is going to be the top. And you might be saying, well, it's not very dark. So what I can do is always go in and rub my paintbrush against it and I'll start to pick up more of the pigment and see how now it's nice and dark. Now I'm going to just drag the rest of the color on the edges. A little bit more paint just to make it a tiny bit darker. So I'm grabbing very little paint when I do this. I'm not dipping it in and then painting all over. I'm going very gently. I want to also do the bottom. And I know that yellow's there, so we're just going right next to it. Now we're going to start to come over some of our yellow parts with um, green. So I still have a little green on my brush. I'm not going to dip it in just yet. I'm actually going to let that kind of carry the color. And I'm going over the next layer. I'm going to take a little bit of water, a little bit of the green. And if it's too dark, like that color is kind of too dark, I can dip my paintbrush back in the water and then start to blend it out. take a little bit of the green so again a little dot of water a little bit of my green and I'm actually gonna put it right on top of this yellow and I'm just gonna kind of do a circular motion if I run out a little dot and a little dot and now it's starting to get our jewel tone that we want now I'm gonna go back in with green and I'm just gonna go right into my palette because I should have enough water and I'm just gonna accent some parts. So I'm gonna make some parts darker. So this middle part where my Sharpie line is, I wanna add a dark layer. So I'm gonna dip it again. I also wanna take some and place it along this side. I'm going to place a little bit more down here at the bottom of my second layer, not my third layer, just my second. Again, outlining the edges of my black sharpie. And that looks great. It's starting to get that jewel tone effect. So I'm going to let that sit until it dries for a little bit and I'm going to start working on the next crystal. So for this one, I'm gonna go in with the reddish tones. If you want to pick a different color, maybe you wanna do purple and pink, you totally can. Just think about which color is lighter so you can place that in the center first. So I'm gonna do a red, orange, yellow type. So I'm gonna start with my yellow first. I'm gonna place it on the right side of each of my pillars. So right, see I only take water when I need it. I don't want it to be super soaking wet. I also want to place it in the center of this triangle and it's okay if I go off a little bit. But I don't want to place it on the bottom because this is where my shadow is going to be. So I don't want to place it down here, just on the top. So now I'm going to go in with my orange and I'm just going to go on the edges of where I started. So a little bit over here just to have a blending color. And see I'm using very loose strokes. I'm just letting the paintbrush guide and do its thing. Add some down here just on the edge of this sharpie line. Now I want to go in with my red and go with the darkest color on the outside. So we see that my red's pretty bright so I want to actually get it to be a little more pigmented. I want it to be darker. Dragging my color up and outward. Now I also want to do a little bit right here. I'm letting it blend in with my orange, kind of using little circles to guide me. So I'm filling in all the white spots that I had before. And 
I want to go over this edge since it's still the outside and my crystal is technically red. I want to keep the edges red. And the bottom part is going to be all red. So that's just straight red. Now I'm going to let this one dry before I add one more color. And I'm going to go back to my green to add in just a touch like a kiss the tiniest bit you could possibly grab of dark blue just a tiny 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 bit and i'm going to go over my darkest places again so see i didn't pick up much of it just a little tiny bit i want to just add a little more depth and it's starting to look like it's really glowing. Those parts with the yellow look like they're really glowing. So now that one has finished. We're completely done. We've worked with yellow, with green, and with blue, and we made this beautiful gem with nice and interesting value. So we wanna do the same thing for our red crystal. So I'm actually gonna use this fuchsia color that I have in my set. If you don't have a fuchsia, you can always use a purple, just a tiny bit. So just a touch. And I'm going in the darkest places. So that's the places that have my straight red. There's no other color, it's just red. So this bottom part. Now if we look at both of them side by side, we can see that the blue really made our yellow stand out and the fuchsia or purple really is gonna make your yellow and your orange tones stand out. If you want to fill up the page with some smaller crystals, you totally can do that as well. So there you have it, fourth grade. We have two big crystals with a couple little ones on the outside. So this would be an awesome card that you could give to someone. It's super cool. It shows different kinds of value and how colors can make each other stand out to create dimension and depth where it looks like it's three dimensional and it's popping out at you. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I can't wait to see your beautiful artwork. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy creating.